We have low interest rates for years. Money is cheap. People want to find investments. They become more speculative. Syndication came into the forefront. Hello and welcome. My name is Gino Barbaro. I'm one of the co-founders of Jake and Gino. And in this how-to video, we are going to dive into how to create and start a syndication business. When Jake and I started investing back in 2011, 2012, syndications were not the rage. It was difficult to raise capital back then. And I think that the 2017 Jobs Act really changed everything and syndication became at the forefront. We have low interest rates for years, money is cheap, People want to find investments. They become more speculative. Syndication came into the forefront. And I think when that happened, people were more focused on raising money for deals than actually learning the business that they were in to be able to raise money. So I'm going to go into the steps on how to create a successful syndication business. And I think the first thing is really to separate the syndication business from whatever business you're in. We invest in multifamily apartments. We're vertically integrated. We're going to get into the business plan real quick. But before I do that, understand that your business is here. The syndication business is another component. It's another stream of revenue. If you look at it from that perspective, when Jake and I started, we bought our own deals. So we had our very first deal. We didn't use investor capital. We self-funded it. We started the property management company. From there, there was a second stream of revenue. On our seventh or eighth deal, we started syndicating. But we already knew and we already had our business plan. So the first step for me is to educate yourself. And, and for us is that three-step framework, buy right, manage right, and finance right. And whatever avenue you're in, whether you're in multifamily, the single family space, self-storage, you need to understand. And that's the second one, develop the business plan. Understand, educate yourself. And then the second one is develop your business plan. Use our framework to buy right, manage right, finance right. I'm gonna hold up a book here. Big shout out to Kim Taylor. How to raise capital legally. It's important that you understand the syndication process because it moves real quick. You know, our students in the Jake and Gino community, they've raised over $400 million. And the very first thing that I tell them, before you even think about raising a dollar of investor capital, you need to understand that when you do that, you are a fiduciary of their money. You need to understand the plan itself. You need to understand the syndication rules and you need to understand your vehicle. Now, thankfully for myself, I've lost hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars in real estate before I met Jake. Ironically enough, I had all these mistakes and I was fortunate that I had never lost investor capital. It was always my capital. So my limiting belief going in with Jake was, we're not gonna take investor capital. It's too risky. If I lose money, I want to lose my own money. I don't want to lose investors' capital. Now, was that short-sighted? Was that a limiting belief? I think looking back, it absolutely was. And when we started the syndication process in the business back in 2018, and we got some really great deals. If I had shifted that mindset a little bit, I'd probably have more assets under management. I probably would have had more deals, but that wasn't my path. My only you know, guidance to you is if you're going to start taking investor capital before you take a dollar, make sure that you have number one, educating yourself, and number two, developing the business plan, creating the resources. Make sure you have a one pager about yourself. Make sure you have a bio. You need a website, right? You need a create credibility book, possibly. We had all these assets before we started the syndication business. We started raising capital. The third one is the legal structure and compliance. This is where this book comes in. Don't be afraid to schedule an hour call with Kim or with any syndication attorney out there. You need to understand what the structure looks like for you and for your team or else you're going to be in big trouble because when you start syndicating, things move real quick. Do you have an operating agreement set in place? Do you have your LLCs created? All these things that you need to think of beforehand, have those calls before you start having investor calls, before you start analyzing deals and looking at deals. You can look at deals, but don't put a deal in the contract without having your education and without talking to a syndication attorney first. The next one is to build a network. Now, when you're in any kind of real estate business, as an investor, when I look at a syndication company or a syndicator, I want to see who is on his team or her team. Do they have a CPA? 
Do they have a property management company? If they're going third-party property management, do they have the syndication attorney? Do they have a cost segregation specialist? Who's their insurance broker? If you're starting to go out and take investor capital, you need to have a team in place. So then when you start taking investors capital, these investors, if they're smart investors and they should, are going to ask who your team members are. Before you even look at deals, before you start analyzing deals and underwriting deals, you should have that team in place. So when you start putting those deals on the contract, you can go to. Who out there is going and doing your inspections? Do you have a construction crew set up if you're going to be doing a heavy lift on the property? You need to start building out a network and a list. The next one, step five, once you've done all the groundwork, once you understand buy right, manage right, finance right, by the way, jakeandgino.com forward slash webinar, sign up. You're going to learn the process of buy right, manage right, and finance right. Because if you're going to start going out syndicating deals and raising money or doing deals on your own, you need the process, the framework. Don't lose hundreds of thousands of dollars like I did before I met Jake. Once I met Jake, game over. Process, yellow brick road, buy right, manage right, finance right. But now this step five, all of a sudden you're going to start identifying those opportunities. And what that means is that's part of the framework, the buy right. Now I could spend an hour just on this show talking about buy right and I won't, I won't do that. Early on for myself, I was investing in mobile home parks. I was investing in strip centers. I had invested in duplexes. I had invested in a mixed use building. I had no buy right criteria. I was all over the place. If you're syndicating, make sure you figure out a buy right criteria for yourself. How many units, market, median income? Is it in a flood zone? What type, is it garden? Is it townhome style? Are there garages? Do you have amenities? The list goes on and on. You need to create your buy right criteria. So when you see a deal, you can pounce on that deal. The next one is step six. Once you've found the deal, all of a sudden, back to Kim or any syndication attorney, start creating the offering documents. You need to get on there, start creating the documents with your attorney because things move really quick. And this is, I think, <clears throat> right now when you're putting together that webinar. You're putting together the resources you need to get out to your investors. This is the time that you've got that deal in the contract. This is where all the documents are starting to be created. The next one, step seven, is fundraising. It's go time. You've got six weeks, eight weeks, two months to be able to raise that capital. And it's very important, the step before that I just talked about, you need to have those documents created. You cannot take a dollar of capital until you have all those docs created. So don't have that webinar and not have anything ready to go because you may have soft commitments and then all of a sudden they're ready to give you money. You can't take that money and that opportunity just dies and flounders. How do I know that? We were guilty of it on our second syndication. We didn't have the docs prepared in time. When it was time to go for that webinar, we were like, oh, you know what? We're not ready yet. We'll let you know on the next webinar. We had lost all that momentum. Man, when you're ready as a salesperson, you have that scarcity in place, you have that opportunity, and yet you can't take the money, there goes all the juice in that, that, that webinar. So make sure you have everything ready. Now, now, step number eight, boom, you're done. You close in the deal. This is where manager right comes into play. We've bought the asset, we financed it, we syndicated it right. Now it's time to start managing the asset and all those promises that you put forth. IRR, cash on cash, five-year horizon, whatever it is, it's time to start managing the asset. And this is a crucial time because this is when you have the takeover process. You want to have enough communication with your investors. And this is you know, step number nine, reporting and communication. This is so important, especially when you're your first or second syndication. You really want to over deliver for these investors because you're going to see in the very first syndication or two, you may have people with a lot of money. But they may say to themselves, well, Gino, you've never really done a syndication. You're pretty new to the space. I'm going to put my toe in the water. I'm only going to put 50 grand with you. And you're going to go, you know what? Whatever you can is great. You need to perform and over deliver and outperform in that first asset. That's why reporting and communication is key. We were doing monthly webinars. <clears throat> that may be overkill on our first syndication. <clears throat> but for us, it was so important to be able to work through the plan, work through the process, share with our investors what was going on. We would do a webinar 30 to 45 minutes every month, and then we would send the recording out to whoever wasn't on. <clears throat> and it was actually part of goodwill. It was actually educating the investors. It may have been a little too much, but I'd rather over-promise, over-deliver than under. I'd rather over-communicate than under-communicate. And then what we ended up doing after about a year, the asset was stabilized. 
we went to quarterly webinars. Every three months we'd get on, it was like basic 30 minutes talking about the quarter, talking about distributions, capital repairs, whatever was going on, the future of that asset getting on every quarter. Now, number 10, the last one, this is when you've done a couple, you're expanding and you wanna start diversifying. You possibly may not be doing syndications for yourself, maybe quote unquote co-GPing or partnering up with other syndicators. Just make sure that you are partnering up with other people that align with your goals, with your values, with your buy right process, with your framework. It's important that you do that. Now, there's some things that as a syndicator on your very first or second deal, you don't need to worry about. You need to focus on the business plan, the education and the execution. But as you've done a couple, you don't want to start constantly going out there and what we say hunting for money. You want the money to start coming in, inbound. And this is where on your second or third syndication, you know, the social media and the branding starts taking into effect. Now, I'm not saying you shouldn't start branding on your very first one. Obviously, you should have a website, you should have possibly a logo, a name of your company, direct people there. But that to me, I don't think is the focus on the very first or second syndication. The very first or second one, once again, I'm going to say it again, buy right, manage right, finance right, syndication attorney, follow all the rules and all the processes to be able to take that asset down and start performing on that asset. Then from there, you're going to start working on your Facebook page. LinkedIn is a really important page. Go to my LinkedIn page at Gino Barbaro. Take a look at my page and you know, rip off and duplicate. See what I have in my about section. See what I have in, in all of the different ways that I've built out that page to show credibility, to show social proof on LinkedIn. It's a great platform. Instagram is another place where you can start doing Instagram shorts. Start showing those shorts on your Instagram page and start sharing that with your investors. And I think the last one, use YouTube. YouTube's a great place. I think as far as a syndicator goes, if you're you vertically integrated, we have a, a page on YouTube for our property management company where we put our properties and we do virtual tours. People will actually walk through and go to YouTube before they even go to the property. So utilizing social media for two reasons, to actually manage the asset, but also to manage your brand. Start building that brand and start building that authority. And what's really important, once again, learn the business. Do not invest and take anybody's capital and put it into a deal until you know how to invest in that asset. It can be crypto. It can be stocks. You can be raising money for single family homes. You can be raising money for mobile home parks. Whatever the asset, it's the same thing. Once again, educate yourself, develop the business plan, Create the legal structure, get with the syndication attorney, and start buying assets. If you want any more information on this, just go to jakeandgino.com. We've got bunches of blogs and articles on there that will help you to syndicate that first deal. It's one amazing tool in the tool belt. And if you think of it as a separate business, you have investors that you need to take care of. You need investors that you need to cultivate. You have a customer experience with those investors. As you can see, property management has residents. Syndication business has investors. You are the asset manager and you are a fiduciary for those investors. So learn the business, go out there, go crush it. Now, if you want any more information, just reach out to me, Gino at jakeandgino.com. I'd love to give you a free copy of Wheelbarrow Profits as a PDF. Learn the process of buy right, manage right, and finance right. Listen, I want to really thank you for being on this call and listening on this how-to because it's important. You know, syndication is getting, you know, reamed now. Everyone's having capital calls. It's still a great tool. Just learn the business, think long-term, and always put your investors first. Thanks, everybody, and we'll see you on next week's how-to. Thanks for tuning in. If you enjoyed today's video, be sure to like and subscribe so you'll never miss another episode.